Hey everybody, this is Ms. Bella here to talk to you guys about the next article that you're going to be reading. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. This is the one that uh, you'll be reading. I've assigned it. It's called, In a Bizarre Biological Twist, A Mother Lion Adopts a Leopard Cub in India. We've been reading all year about uh, animals and endangered animals, and I thought it'd be cool to kind of continue that conversation and to learn a little bit more about some of the uh, strange things that happens within our animal communities. And so uh, thank you to those of you who have completed days one and two of the assignments, and uh, I will be checking those. This week I am gonna be actually looking at your pre-showcase activity that you did um, last week, and I'm just gonna quickly pull that up in case you haven't turned it in yet. So this assignment here, your pre-showcase activity. This one, um, I am grading this week. Some of you have not uh, completed it or have turned it in. So if that's you, if you have not uh, done this assignment, please get it done because it is now a missing assignment. Once I have entered in all the grades, then you'll see on your portal that it is missing. Okay, so please make sure that this gets turned in. I also want to remind you of another thing um, when you guys get onto your Google Classroom, you do have to open the assignment up. And I, well, I can't show you on my screen because this is um, my account, but let me see if I can pull up another student's. Okay, so please make sure that you guys open the assignment Okay, and you have to mark it as done. So after you watch the video and you've done the assignment on Uzella, you do need to mark it as done or else it's gonna be marked as missing or possibly late, like this one here is missing. So, um, and I wrote a little note to please mark as done when you finish. So anytime I assign something on Classroom um, and it is uh, a video or it's a website, you do have to mark it as done because it's an assignment. Okay, so just make sure that you guys are doing that. I'm gonna close this up. So thank you to those who have already been doing that. All right, so we're again gonna be focusing on a few things. I'm just gonna pull up my lesson plans real quick for you guys. Okay, so as we are reading, we are highlighting important facts and main ideas. We are identifying and defining three to five important vocabulary words, and we are writing three to five questions or comments, okay? Then we wanna take the quiz when we're done, and then we're gonna also complete the writing prompt using say, show, so, and transitions, okay? So I wanna make sure you guys remember that. Again, every day I'm taking a little bit away the support because I want you to eventually be able to do this on your own. But let's go ahead and get started for today. So now this particular assignment does have a power words activity. So you are going to have to do this activity here. Okay. So um, please make sure that you complete the power words activity along with the writing and the quiz. Okay. Now because this assignment does have a power words activity, we're actually going to skip the vocab portion that we normally would do and this article already has vocabulary for us. So we'll be taking a look at that today. So let's go ahead and get started. Make sure that you are opened up to the correct title. In a bizarre biological twist, a mother lion adopts a leopard cub in India. The word count should be 808. If it's not, then you are on a different version and you need to go to the correct version. All right, here we go. In December 2018, researchers at the Gur National Park in India stumbled upon a lioness with a surprise. She appeared to have a, a she appeared to have adopted a baby leopard as one of her own. The little male cub, who was around two months old, was seen nursing from the lioness. It was seen feeding from her kills and playing with her two biological cubs, who were around the same age as the leopard. This rare case of inter interspecies foster care left the researchers entirely befuddled. The researchers published an article in the journal uh, Ecosphere in February. In the article, they described the lioness behavior as plainly bizarre. Okay, 
So let's just start by highlighting the main idea. Okay, so this was a lengthy paragraph, but we wanna highlight the main idea or the main fact, main uh, topic of what's going on in this paragraph here. So let's go ahead and start with the second sentence here. We'll go ahead and highlight that in yellow. Okay, so main ideas are gonna be highlighted in yellow, okay? And let's go ahead and highlight some other um, important facts. So we know that this happened a couple of years ago and it happened at the Gur National Park in India. And let's highlight, uh, we know that the leopard, the baby leopard was a male cub, about two months old. And we also know that it was feeding from the kills of the lion and playing with the two biological cubs. Now, I do wanna pinpoint a particular important vocab word here. I know that I had said, let's not focus so much on other vocab words, but I can't help but really look at this word befuddled because it's such an interesting word that I'm sure not a lot of you have used before. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. And let's go ahead and write a definition of what we think. Again, we wanna use context clues and try to figure out what words mean based on the context it's used in. So let's start by typing the word out. Okay, so the sentence, let's look at the sentence that it's in. So it says, this rare case of interspecies foster care left the researchers entirely befuddled. So what do you think befuddled means, right? So befuddled, um, if the researchers have never seen this type of behavior before, then they were shocked, surprised, confused, okay? So befuddled, therefore, can mean any of those words, right? Shocked, confused, surprised. All right, let's go ahead and continue. And actually, I, I just want to stop real quick because I want us to take a look at the whole article first. I mean, usually um, articles have subtitles, and this one here doesn't really have any subtitles. It's one long article that doesn't really break it up into other smaller parts. So what I would like us to do is every two to three paragraphs, let's just stop and reflect on what we read and then let's um, write either a question or a comment, okay? Because usually you wanna write a question or comment for each section, but because this article doesn't have sections, um, we wanna stop every couple of paragraphs to write our own question or comment. All right, so let's take a look at the next paragraph. From an evolutionary perspective, caring for the offspring of another animal doesn't make much sense. Let's go ahead and highlight the word offspring. And we'll highlight that in purple. We'll come back to it later. Raising young, nursing them, gathering food for them, making sure they stay safe requires a lot of time and energy. And this is typically done in the interest of propagating one's own genes. It's not unheard of for animals to look for non-biological offspring of the same species but such acts directly help in boosting the caregiver's lifetime productive success, the study authors wrote. Female cheetahs, for instance, are known to adopt orphan male cubs, and once they reach adulthood, they form large coalitions with the mother's own offspring. Okay, so there's that word again, offspring. So what do you think offspring is? Go ahead and take a look at the sentence that it's in. And what do you guys think it means? I'm going to shout out at my computer. I can't hear you, but <laughs> go ahead and shout it out anyway. Okay, so offspring would be children. Okay, that's offspring. So you are offspring of your parents. You are the children of your parents. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and save that. But there are a couple of words that have been um, uh, underlined for us. So we have the word requires. And if you click on that, it tells you what the word means. It also gives you a, um, 
how to pronounce the word. Requires. When something requires a thing, it must have it. Okay. And then coalitions is the other power word. Coalitions. Coalitions are groups of people or animals that work together. All right. So keep that in mind as we read. Let's go ahead and just go back though and highlight a main idea of the second paragraph here. And I feel that the most important sentence of this paragraph, we do have a quote, yes, but um, I, I feel like the main idea um, of this paragraph would probably be this third one here, because it tells us why animals raise the offspring of other animals. Okay, so raising young, nursing them, gathering food for them, making sure they stay safe requires a lot of time and energy. And this is typically done in the interest of propagating one's own genes. So I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Um, why do we raise the young? Why do animals raise the young? Because they are trying to help propagate their own genes, um, their own um, species, okay? So, but, if you look at the next sentence, it's not unheard of for animals to look after non-biological offspring of the same species. So let's go ahead and highlight that as our main idea, because the article is about an animal raising a, another animal, a different animal, okay? And so this sentence here is um, gonna support that. But I also want us to highlight this quote in yellow as well, because it also supports the claim, the main idea. Okay, it says, such acts directly help in boosting the caregiver's lifetime reproduct reproductive success. So in other words, animals that take care of other animals, it actually helps them. So taking care of another animal helps that particular animal as a caregiver. Okay, and, and it gives us an example of a female cheetah. All right, and um, but we're going to go ahead and move on. So um, let's go ahead and read the next paragraph. Before the lioness and her leopard cub pounced onto the scene, there had been just two other documented instances of interspecies adoption. In 2006, scientists described the adoption of a marmoset by a family of wild capuchin monkeys. More recently, a bottlenose dolphin mother was observed caring for a melon-headed whale calf over the course of more than three years. But in these cases, according to the researchers, none of the foster parents and adoptees belong to mutually competing species. Lions and leopards, by contrast, compete for the same resources in the wild and are usually not very fond of one another. So that makes it pretty interesting, right? So. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples here. This particular paragraph is really focused on just examples of animals that have taken care of other animals, okay? So um, let's go ahead and highlight those samples. So we have starting in the second sentence um, and then all the way to, so it's these two sentences, so we have this example here of the marmoset and the monkey and then the bottlenose dolphin and the melon-headed whale calf. And as a reader, I want to know a little bit more. I want to know a little bit more about these animals and what they look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and look up what a marmoset is. I apologize for all the tabs that I have open but um, I need them. <laughs> so this is a marmoset, adorable looking little, I, I don't know what you would even call it. It looks like a little tiny monkey, but look how small it is. That's pretty adorable. That's a marmoset. And the article said that the marmoset uh, was adopted by a wild capuchin monkey. So let's go ahead and look that up. So these are wild capuchin monkeys and they adopted a marmoset. Interesting. All right, let's come back here. And then we have also the example of the 
bottlenose dolphin that was carried for a melon-headed whale calf. So let's take a look at what a bottlenose dolphin looks like. Okay, so that's a bottlenose dolphin. And it was taking care of a melon-headed whale. And specifically, the calf. A calf is a baby. Okay. These are interesting little whales. They actually look like dolphins themselves, but they're not dolphins, they're whales. So it's interesting how these two different species um, look alike, but you know, of course they're not, but we have one, you know, the dolphin taking care of this whale. Interesting. All right, let's go back to the article. Um, okay, so I also have a quote here. None of the foster parents and adoptees belong to mutually competing species. Let's go ahead and highlight that in yellow as well. Okay, so before I move on, I want to go ahead and write my question or comment. We have three paragraphs that we've read so far. I want to just stop and kind of reflect on what I've read. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pause my video. I want you guys to go ahead and pause the video too and go ahead and write either a question or comment. I'm gonna do the same, and then I will share what I wrote with you guys. Okay, so please pause. All right, so I went ahead and wrote a comment. So in that third paragraph, I highlighted the last sentence, and I wrote, I wonder why lions and leopards take care of each other's young if they are competing for the same food. So I thought that was interesting that you know, these particular animals, these monkeys, and then the dolphin, um, they are not competing with the species that they take care of, but lions and leopards do compete with each other. So I thought it was interesting that they would take care of each other's young, knowing that they compete for the same food. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So I wrote a comment about that. Let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the article. They are at perpetual odds. Stotra Chakrabarty said. He is the study co-author and animal behavior researcher at the University of Minnesota. Lions kill both adult leopards and their cubs, while leopards are prone to attacking unguarded lion cubs. Let's go ahead and highlight the word prone. Okay. And I'm going to also highlight a main idea here. So the last sentence is the most important sentence. But I want to take a look at the word prone. I know it got highlighted twice. That's OK. So the sentence says, lions kill both adult leopards and their cubs, while leopards are prone to attacking unguarded lion cubs. So to prone, to be prone to do something, means you are likely to do it. So leopards are likely to attack unguarded lion cubs. So likely or even the word willing to. Okay. So again, leopards are likely to attack little baby lions. Okay. Um, but in this situation here, we have a a female lion who's actually taking care of a baby leopard, which is interesting. So let's go ahead and continue. Oh, one more thing I forgot. We also want to make sure we're highlighting names and places in separate colors, of course. Again, you want to make sure you're using different colors for different things, okay, um, to help your brain kind of stay organized as to what it's looking for. Again, we're filtering information. Um, and we are using colors to help our brain make sense of that information and how um, all the information is in different categories. Okay, so that's why it's important to highlight. Um, unfortunately, well, actually, I think on state testing, you are given the option of highlighting in different colors. Um, but um, for now, for the newsella, for the sake of you just developing your reading skills, um, please make sure you're using different colors for different purposes. Okay, let's continue. 
And yet the mother lion, her lion cubs, and her spotted leopard baby all got along just fine. Researchers thought the blended family would last only briefly. In 2017, an African lioness in Tanzania was seen nursing a leopard cub. Let's go ahead and highlight that in green because we have a year and we have um, a place and then the a name of this animal, the African lioness. But the association lasted for just one day and was not considered a formal adoption, the study authors wrote. <clears throat> Let's highlight that in green as well. Over the course of a 45-day observation period, however, the researchers saw the leopard cub hanging out with its foster family on 29 different days. All right. Let's go ahead and highlight that in green. Okay. So I feel like this particular paragraph doesn't have a main idea necessarily. It just gives us more examples of other animals taking care of a different species of cub. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that in green. I think earlier these examples were highlighted in yellow. And I feel like just kind of looking at what we're doing now, these are not necessarily main ideas, but examples. Why don't we go ahead and change these to green? So you can just click on them and then change the color. I just want to make sure that we're, we're doing the best thing for ourselves as readers. And sometimes, you know, as we read, we make mistakes. You know, I know I make mistakes sometimes when I'm reading um, and I'm trying to filter and decipher information. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just the reading process. It's not going to always be super easy or simple or neat. Um, learning is messy. Reading is messy. Um, but when we do our activities over here, then that's when we need to kind of organize ourselves. Okay. But the reading process is going to be messy as it should be. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. Actually, I'm going to pause real quick. And then I will continue. I have a message from one of my coworkers that I need to answer. So I will come back. All right. And I am back. Thank you very much for waiting. Um, actually, you just kept playing the video, I bet, right? So, <laughs> um, all right. So let's go ahead and continue with this. We're going to read one more paragraph and then we'll do a question or comment. So here we go. The relationship only seems to have come to an end when the leopard baby died. In February 2019, his body was found near a watering hole. There were no signs of injury suggesting that he had been attacked. A necropsy, in fact, indicated that the cub had been suffering from a congenital femoral hernia. This is a blood vessel rupture, which likely caused his death. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight February 2019 as a fact. And... Let's highlight that first sentence as the main idea or the main topic. And the word indicated is a power word. Indicated. If something is indicated, it is shown to be correct or true. Okay, so that's indicated. So a necropsy, in fact, indicated that the cub had been suffering from a hernia. Okay, but let's go ahead and highlight necropsy in purple as an important word. Now, a necropsy, what can we assume a necropsy is, right? Um, so if, if we, uh, if, an, if a necropsy is done on an animal, and I hope I'm saying it right, but if a necropsy is done on an animal, then it's basically a procedure that shows what, how an animal died. Okay, so that's my assumption of what a necropsy is just based on the facts, right? So we have a necropsy uh, indicated that the cub had been suffering. So if indicated means to be shown to be correct or true, then this shows to be true how it died. Therefore, a necropsy must be some kind of a procedure done on, a, on an animal after it has died. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and write that down. Okay. 
and we're gonna save that. All right, so now let's go ahead and write a question or comment for these last three paragraphs here. Go ahead and pause the video so you can write your question or comment and I can write mine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up a little bit. I'm gonna show you where I put my question. I wrote a question for this particular section and it was in response to this sentence here. So I wrote, how did the leopard cub end up alone to begin with? So I'm just kind of interested to know, like usually, you know, animals, babies, mothers, fathers, like they take care of each other. How is it that this leopard cub ended up alone to the point where it was being taken care of by the mother lion and her cubs, right? So how did it become orphaned? How did it become in this animal foster care, so to speak? So that was my question. And I look forward to reading your questions and comments. Okay, so we have how many more paragraphs left? One, two, three, four at the bottom. So what I like you to do now is to go ahead and read the rest of the article yourself. You are highlighting, you are annotating with questions and comments. Um, make sure you take a look at the other power words that are there, okay? When you are done, you are gonna do this um, power words um, section, okay? And these are questions for you guys regarding the power words. We have the quiz, of course. There are four questions there. Please make sure you take your time with that. And then, of course, the writing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the writing. So write a paragraph that explains the central idea of the text. Use at least two details from the article to support your response. Okay. So again, you guys are going to be writing in Say Show So. Okay, and the central idea is gonna be your say, all right? So I'm gonna give you some sentence starters. So you're gonna go ahead and finish the sentence. What is the main idea? What's the central idea? Your show is going to be, and I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. Your, your show is going to be at least two details from the article to support your response. Okay, so let's just give two. If you wanna give three, four, five, that's great. Um, I'm gonna give you sentence starters for the, for the first two, okay? So you wanna begin with a transition. Again, you wanna have your transitions list open, um, either digital list or in your interactive notebook, you should have your um, transitions uh, document on glued into one of your pages. Just make sure you check your table of contents to see what page that is. But I'll go ahead and give you, I'll give you uh, one. So our show, we can start with according to the text, comma, and then you wanna give a quote. Okay, give a quote from the text that supports what the central idea is, okay? And then you're going to explain the quote, all right? And then you're going to give your second detail. And you can use words like furthermore. Okay, so furthermore, and then you're going to give your second detail. Okay, then you're going to explain that detail. You want to elaborate. Okay, a lot of times you guys have um, really good ideas that you don't elaborate on. You just state them and then you move on and you really have to explain, explain what they mean, explain the purpose of them, okay? Um, and then for your so, you're gonna tell me why this information is important, why this matters, okay? And again, you can select any transitions you like for the so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you one. You don't have to use this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you one. So this information is important because, and then you're gonna finish the sentence, okay? So your paragraph as a whole 
should be anywhere between five and 10 sentences, depending on how much you write. Okay, if you are a developing writer, I expect five to seven. If you are a strong writer, um, I expect seven to 10. So you know who you are as a writer. Um, and so you're gonna go ahead and write your own response. But I am giving you a little bit of support in how you should be starting your sentences and your paragraph. Okay, don't forget to submit your response when you're done. Okay, be careful with that because um, if you submit it by accident, you didn't finish, it's not gonna let you unsubmit it, okay? So please do not submit it to you are absolutely done. And of course, make sure you do the power words and the quiz, all right? Go ahead and finish highlighting the document along with the um, comments and any other additional vocabulary that you find, or I should say, this is vocabulary, any other additional comments, okay? So make sure you guys are using your colors appropriately. You're not over highlighting, you're only highlighting um, purposefully with the correct, or the per with the colors that make the most sense for you and categorizing that information. All right, um, thank you very much. I hope you guys have a beautiful Wednesday. I hope you are staying healthy and safe. Take care of each other. Miss you guys, love you guys. I'll talk to you later.